Tom Weisskopf has always been in the shadow of something bigger, dwarfed by it even, by the best player ever and his own prodigious talent. Now at last, he's comfortable with his place in the world, set small against these Montana mountains where he lives. As you get knocked around a little bit, you understand that life is a challenge. I look back now and I, it'd be easy to change, but I can't go back. Weisskopf grew up in 1950s working class Cleveland. His father, a railroad worker. What was your relationship like with your father? <sighs> Difficult. He was a tough guy. There was just this disconnect. There was a respect I had for him. There, he respected me, you know? But I didn't get enough information about what life's all about. Weisskopf learned the game from his parents, mom a local champion, and dad a plus two handicap. With that foundation, he set his sights on beating the best. Growing up in Ohio, what did the name Nicholas mean to a young golfer? Well, I mean, he was legendary in Ohio. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to play like him. He appeared destined to do just that, following Jack Nicklaus at Ohio State, and by 1965, onto the PGA Tour, arriving with swagger and a museum-quality swing, stardom written all over his six-foot-three-inch frame. Tom Weisskopf had as much talent as any player I've ever seen play the tour. He was probably the equal, if not a better, striker of the golf ball than Nicholas. I was so impressed with the way he played. He made golf look easy. Great swing, great posture, great balance. Tom Weisskopf will be using a two iron. I mean, what he could do with a two iron or fairway woods or any of this other stuff was very foreign to me. He could have been the next Nicholas. Regarding those comparisons, how did they begin to weigh on you and, and impact you? A lot of pressure. You know, I let it bother me. Weiskopf must hold this putt to tie Nicholas. Didn't break an eighth of an inch. It was uh, demoralizing at times when I thought I was playing good enough, winning on tour, but it continued, you know, this expectation. Those expectations became a burden. Where Nicholas was disciplined and sensible, Weisskopf could be volatile, earning the nickname the Towering Inferno. Your disposition, how, how would you describe it? Mm, spontaneously temperamental, loss of patience, sometimes it, I don't want to be here attitude. Five times in a 20-year career, I walked off the golf course. I just said, I don't want to be out here anymore. I, I've, I've had it. Here's my scorecard. I quit. Regret those? Oh, yes. You should never quit. Being volatile is sometimes to your advantage, and sometimes it's to your disadvantage. And in Tom's case, I never really understood what went through his head sometimes. You know, sometimes he would be really right there and ready to win and didn't, and you could never figure out why. Why couldn't you give yourself a break and say, it's a hard game? Because I, I could be so good on the practice tee and so good in practice rounds, and there wasn't a shot I couldn't play, but it wasn't consistent. I was always after perfection. His first seven years on tour, Weisskopf won five times, but had not fulfilled his vast promise, especially at the majors finishing second twice at the Masters. Then, early in 1973, his father was in the final stages of a bout with terminal cancer. In those final months, the two would speak for hours where they rarely had before. And he said, everybody thinks the world of you, Tom, your game. You just don't believe in yourself. Sometimes you make bad decisions because of the hole you just played previously. He said, just be a little bit more patient and let it happen. It will come. I won't be here to see that happen. His father passed in March of 1973. From there, Tom Weisskopf played the best golf of his life. 
loved. Every day I would think about him when I got up. That was my reason. That was my dedication. I'm going to prove to my father that I'm the golfer that he believed could be. That year, he won three times leading into the Open at Royal Troon. And yet, Nicholas was still the story as he needed one more major victory to break Bobby Jones's record. But Weisskopf, for once, would not be denied. I just said, nobody can beat me. I birdied four of the first five holes starting out. It was almost easy. I was calm. I felt like Jack Nicklaus did for 25 years. <laughs> That's the way that guy felt all the time. Smiling now, so he knows that nothing can stop him. Weisskopf had played the way everyone thought he could, the way his father told him he would. He won wire to wire and tied Arnold Palmer's open scoring record of 276. The only thing I wish I could say, uh, you know, I wish that my father was alive to see this. I didn't put out my best in front of him and doggone it. As long as I'm playing this game, I'm going to do my best. I really wanted to win this tournament more than any other major tournament I ever played in. After Troon, Weisskopf won seven more tournaments, though never another major, slowed by a wrist injury, but ultimately by a drinking problem. There was no moderation. I couldn't have just one or two. I had to keep going. When you were playing, say, mid-70s, did you get to a point where it hurt your performance? Definitely. You're angry, you know, you're not feeling good, and you make a couple bogeys, and it, then it gets worse. July 14th, 1973. That's the date of his crowning achievement as a player, his open win, his lone major. But there is another more important day that he is quick to acknowledge, January 2nd, 2000, the day he stopped drinking. How is life better without drinking? Well, I don't have to think about what I did the night before. Didn't have to apologize to anything that I said to anybody the night before. I could remember what happened the night before. I just think it didn't work for me. With his wife, Lori, he skis, hunts, and fishes at the glorious Yellowstone Club outside Bozeman, still active, too, as one of golf's most highly regarded course designers. And though he did catch glimpses, he never did become the next Nicholas. At long last, he's happy to just be Tom Weisskopf. I've reconciled my life simply because uh, I'm not going to live with regrets. I want to sit on the porch and, and, and really think about the things I accomplished. I've had a tremendous life. <laughs>